Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to today's golf rules tip, golf ball stuck in a tree. And if you're watching this video, you may be thinking, how, you know, how often does this happen? Well, it does happen. Matter of fact, my oldest daughter who plays in a lot of golf tournaments, about a year ago, this happened to her when she hit her drive off a of par four in towards some pine trees and the ball came to rest up in one of the branches. This does happen. In this case, I've got a golf ball that's up here in the fork of this tree that, you know, this, this can happen to you. A ball can bounce and get up there or it can ricochet. Uh, again, it could be a pine tree. Either way, what I'm gonna show you will apply. Now, one important note is where this golf ball is located. My golf ball is up in a tree that is in the general area of the golf course, meaning I'm in a playable part of the golf course. I am not, for example, in a red or yellow penalty area because what I'm about to show you, you cannot use those options. You must abide by what the rules say for red and yellow penalty areas. And this tree is not out of bounds or in any other part of the golf course that is declared unplayable, such as an environmentally sensitive area, etc. We are in the general area and what I'm gonna show you on your options will, will help you. So let's get to it, let's have some fun. Okay, so step number one in this scenario is I must positively identify that that golf ball up in that tree is mine. That's why it's so important that you put a personal mark on every one of your golf balls. Pay attention to me on this. Get a, take the time and get a, a felt tip marker out and put some kind of personalized mark on your golf ball. Don't just say I'm hitting a Titleist 3 today because that could be somebody else's Titleist 3 from two weeks ago, okay? You have to know that that is your golf ball. In my case, I mark mine from the factory, GIR Golf LLC. And thankfully, I can see right there, it says GIR Golf LLC. I have my range finder here because sometimes this, there may be a lot of branches or this may be up higher. You may not be able to positively identify it from here on the ground. You could take your, a pair of binoculars if somebody has them handy, or you can take your range finder. And you may have to back up a little bit and zoom in or zoom out and you can use that to positively identify your golf ball but you must in step one positively identify that golf ball if you cannot then you have to deal with the fact that your ball according to the rules of golf is lost so now now if i did not if i cannot positively identify that then i have to go back to the side of my last stroke with a one stroke penalty and hit from back there but for the benefit of this video talking about what our options are I have positively identified my golf ball, and now let's proceed. Okay, option number one is I can play the ball as it lies without a penalty. So this would be just another stroke added to my score without a penalty, and I can uh, choose how I wanna play this. I could climb this tree if I need to. In this case, I'm not gonna do that. I've got my four iron, which I should be able to reach up there, hit it with the end of the club, try to advance it out into play. Let's see how we do. All right, bounced on the cart path, got it over in the grass. Pretty good result, and that's no penalty. And that may be an option you consider. All right, our only other option, option number two, is to declare the ball unplayable with a one-stroke penalty. On this channel, we have uh, videos that you can go and watch where I go into that in great detail, so I'll just summarize what those options are, and be sure to check those videos out, unplayable ball. However, in this situation, there's gonna be a little added twist. The golf ball is elevated, it's up in the air. And what I have to do is establish that point on the ground that is a perfect plumb line, straight down. If I held a level or a plumb bob, that exact point on the ground is my reference point. If we had branches here and the ball was sitting here in a branch, that point would be straight down. That's my reference point for the option, one of the options for an unplayable ball, of taking a drop within two club lengths of where the golf ball is located. In this case, because my ball is up there in the middle of the tree, the middle of the tree down here at the base would be my reference point, and I could take two club lengths to the left, two club lengths to the right, two club lengths back, and make my dropping area and choose where I want to drop this ball, again, with a one-stroke penalty. Additionally, I could go on the backward extension. 
of where the golf flag is, my red flag in the distance, where my golf ball is, in this case, the middle of the tree, back as far as I would like, put a reference point down, mark out one club length of an area, and take a drop with a one-stroke penalty. And additionally, one other option we have when we declare the ball unplayable, in this situation no different, is go back to the side of our last stroke. If I was in the general area, this was my second shot hitting in here, I'd go back, estimate where I struck the ball, and take a drop within one club length of that area. If I was on the tee, I would simply go back to the tee and tee that ball up just like I did anywhere I want, uh, just like I was playing the hole from the get-go. Thank you everyone for tuning into the channel and watching this video. Hopefully this has educated you on if this happens to you or your buddies on the golf course, what your options are so you play the game correctly. Thank you again so much. Remember to push that subscribe button, that like button. Thank you to all of our loyal subscribers. Remember to smile often, have fun. God loves you. We'll see you next time.